Okay. As you can see behind you guys, it's nighttime. It's currently 11.21, so we don't have much time to record this. But, I figure, I'll go ahead and I will show you guys... Uh... Is it, uh... Ah, here we are. So I figured I'd go ahead and show you guys a quick tutorial on Questmaster. Now, if you're curious, this is the referral link for me. Um, so if you do decide to be my referral, feel free. There it is. You're free to use it because, well, if you buy Moss after you've been referred by someone, then the person that referred you gets bonus moss for any moss that you purchase. Moss is premium currency. Um, some people like to refer to it as pay to win money. Um, it's not pay to win in this game because you can put all of the items on the market and anyone can buy them for coins, which is not premium currency. So there's that. Okay, this game is not pay to win. So, we're going to have ourselves a nice, quick, short video, because I don't have much time to record it. Um, as you can see, it is kind of lagging a little bit. Um, I already logged off my phone, which I have here. I always have my phone with me. <laughs> um, sometimes I get a bit distracted, sometimes I get a bit of lag. And here we have the default load, and then it cuts from that to where I am. As you may have noticed, I'm in rack blood. This is where you go to buy steel, um, if you can't find any good offers on the market. Uh, they also sell iron, they'll buy steel bars, they'll buy coal. Um, biggest things of note, Steel Scimitar, I sell those for 7k. Um, Steel Warpike, I could craft those, but those have a very low chance. So if you're going to go for one of those, best to buy it here. Steel Plate Mail, 30% to craft, uh, 30% success rate to craft, 9 steel bars. So, you know, that's why stuff has such high rates. Um, let's go ahead and enable our mods, in case we need them. Because you just never know. Just make sure. Yep, okay. Got everything I need here. Takes a moment to actually load. And um, I apologize for background noises and whatnot. I am, again, in public. So there's that. Oops, looks like I'm in full screen mode. My computer isn't going to like that. Let's go ahead and switch that back to 7x7, seven seven, shall we? Um, you got a brief glimpse of how Rack Blood is laid out. Um, there's the chest, there's the magician right there, campfire, so on and so forth. We're here for this guy, Questmaster NPC. One of my fellow channel people. Um, suggested this one. Um, if you're on YouTube, feel free to leave a comment. Um, if you're on here, feel free to send me a whisper. Um, because, well, obviously I have a recording channel. Record. Yeah. Um, this is my channel. I hang out here a lot. It's just for me screwing around with recording. Um, if you're on both, feel free to leave a comment and sign your name. Um, so here we have, you know, my quest points. That unlocks different quests. You'll notice, like, I have raw sand crab, I have raw blue marine fish, I have oak logs, I have bone dust armor, okay? So I'm getting different quests, higher grade quests. Oh, there's a maple one. Definitely gonna grab that. <laughs> but let's go over these real quick. Let's see what we got. We got an oak. Oh, there's a hay one. I could do the hay. 
Um, but yeah, I'm I'm looking over the list. I'm looking at what I want. So it says 60 minutes until automatic refresh. That means that this list lasts for 30 minutes. The quest can go on for however long it takes you to either finish or cancel the quest. You cancel the quest by accepting another one. Okay, so like if I take, for example, okay, I'm not gonna do a fishing quest, so let's grab this one. Oh, raw sand crab. Oh no, whatever shall I do? I apparently have zero percent chance, or way too low chance for my taste, to actually catch this, or for some reason just became completely unmotivated. Well, I could grab this oak log quest. Starting another quest will end the current quest. Continue. And I hit no, because, you know, I'm looking it over. I'm probably going to do all these on my phone real fast. Um, <laughs> but this guy, he looks the same in all the towns I can think of. He is in most of the towns. He's in Raval, he's in Dorpat, he's in Rackblood, obviously. I am not sure if I saw him in Cloud Town. I think I did. Um, so he's in most of the towns. If you have your mods loaded and you click on your mini-map, um, without the mods, then... <laughs> he's depressed. Uh, he's a new guy. Red actually wanted to invite him. Um, so, first off, coal. <laughs> there's coal, there's a coal vein. Um, there is where you come in from Wyland, and there is white gold. Uh, there's more white gold. There's more white gold. You'll notice all three of these are veins. And also, they can be reached fairly easily, because that's the path to town. This area, I'm pretty sure these guys are passive, so you can just run right up next to them, no problem. Um, but right here, there's a bronze gold. He respawns, he blocks the way, so if you can't take on a bronze golem, you've been warned. Um, so, anyway, oh yeah, and um, also this grassy area, fairly dangerous as you can see. Um, there's also these rock spirits, they look like trees, they're not trees, heads up. This is the uh, rack blood fishing guy. Um, he's not actually in the town. Um, there's also a few spots where you can get something with a spade around here. I'd have to look that one up, but there's uh, Narwa. So here we have Wyland, here we have Narwa, we're in Rack Blood. Wyland is the southern tip of Dorpa. So for those paying attention, there you go. Um, it's already been like 10 minutes. So let's take another gander at this. Um, yeah, see, it's been four minutes, and it's counting down. If I have uncut emeralds, or if I desire to go out and mine a bunch of emeralds, or maybe just buy some on market, I can cut them and get some experience for it. It's not currently a 2x event, so I wouldn't be doing that anyway myself. Um, I'm probably going to do the farming of hay. And then I'll probably switch straight into the maple log. I might go for the oak if I have enough time, but that maple, that's a lot of coin. So I'm probably going to do that. Um, real quick note, it's not marked on the map, but if you go to Revolve, which is the town that buys iron, remember to be careful of mobs. Um, there's a lot of high-level mobs. You'll get aggro just on the way to the Revolve map if you're not careful or if you aren't high enough level. But um, don't go to the first sandy area because that obviously leads to Mosh 1. If you look carefully, you got sand right there and it says Mosh 1. You want to go all the way up to this Minotaur maze right here. Turn, there's a Orc Mage, I believe it is, right there. I think someone said they could go around that way, around the uh, northeast side of the Minotaur Maze. I'm not sure about that. I didn't actually check that one out. But there's Revolt, and if you go around this oasis here, right in this area is Maple. It's not marked on the map, 
but I harvest the one right up against the snake maze right here. That's where the gold vein is that people love to mine. Um, iron is usually mined right here, I believe it is. Yeah, C. Uh, if you look, there's these uh, different letters. Um, so iron is actually these, like right there and right there. Um, some of them are veins, some of them are not. So make a note of that. If it's a vein, it requires a steel pickaxe. You do not require a steel pickaxe to mine the iron. Poke around, because in this one, there is a non-vein iron. So poke around, you do not need combat to go that distance, okay? There are no monsters that uh, you can't dodge. I won't say there are no monsters along the way, because there are vampires. So there are monsters, and you do have to be careful of them, but you don't need to engage them. You can go around, specifically um, if you... <laughs> I have nothing to demonstrate this, but basically um, anything like right next to the monster, if you can't hit them, they can't hit you. It's that simple. So like if you're over one and over another, then they can't hit you because you can't hit them on that diagonal which to us appears as, you know, north, south, east, and west, which it is. If you pay attention to the minimap, there's a big yellow N right here. That's north. So some players, they give directions where this is north, and clearly that's not the case. There's north. It's marked right there. It's pretty clear. You know, that is north. You know? So, um, clearly... I need to go and get me some hay seeds. I could probably teleport to Dorpat and buy them that way, or I could probably actually save a little bit of money if first let me go to my island, see how my island's holding up. Because my island, I forget if I have hay planted already. I probably don't. I usually leave it. Uh, harvested and uh, tilled, you know, raked. So, yeah, it's looking like my soil is all raked, so I don't have any hay. Um, you may notice I do have it where I have some flooring. I'm using maple uh, under the soil, and you can see I actually <laughs> only have it here. Um, graphic bug to know? If you remove an object, like soil, for example, um, it tends to not want to display the fact that there is flooring there. But if I close this, you can see oak wood floor. Okay, so let me go to remove object ground. That's for flooring. Click in right there. Don't know if you can hear that. And, okay, so it's not showing anything different there. Let me go ahead and use my island deed again. Um, oh, that's, I forgot, that's part of the farming queue mod. Um, that was one thing I'm not sure if I noted when I went over the mods list. Um, using your island deed on your island will actually teleport, well, not teleport, it will guide you. Let's use that word. It will guide you to the exit sign, which will teleport you back to where you were. So, now that we're back at a smaller resolution, it allows us to have a lot less lag. And it's already 11.35. I'm still recording. I've hammered through the quest tutorial already, actually. Um, I suppose I should go over the quest points that you earn. As you clearly saw, each quest has a different allotment for points. You don't actually spend these points. You just earn them. You accumulate them. And I think it's like a tier of every 50 or 100. There's a list somewhere on the forums. 
but you unlock new quests as you go. Um, if you have something that says like fletching, that means you have to use your fletching skill to acquire it. You cannot buy the item. I suppose I should mention that. So like fishing, I actually have to go out and catch the fish. Now if it's, for example, a cooking quest, those are easier because that is a processing quest. You can buy the raw materials, you can buy the raw fish, and you can go out and cook it. So if that was a, a cooking uh, blue marine fish quest, then I could go to Dorka and buy a bunch of blue marine fish and cook them, and it would count. Um, one thing to note, raw pearl clams. They are the rarest drop in the game. So if you get one of those fishing quests, grain of salt, big, big grain of salt, because they're the rarest <laughs> catch in the game, as far as I know, for fishing, okay? I, I think Trident, uh, Poseidon's Trident, might actually be a rarer overall drop, because it's in two parts, you have to assemble it. Um, I'm not sure about that. I have to look it up, so whatever. Um, but yeah, it's it's really rare. So you might not want to take one of those, and it's also the best cooking experience. I like to mention that. I like to squeeze that in whenever I can. Um, so <clears throat> anyway, um, I'm on hay farming. Oh, someone just used a double experience potion. Um, I'm going to go over that real quick. Wiki item name. X. Um, this tells you everything you need to know right here about double experience potion. This is how that big yellow timer on the top right shows up. Someone, somewhere, drinks one of these. And some people may be wondering, well, how do you get them? It says mob drop. Okay, well, there's this um, gate. Okay, and then uh, deadly tree. That's basically another version of gate. I think that's ice tower. They said um, gate. According to the admins, can one shot anybody, and I mean anybody. When I say that, I'm very specific because wiki item name admin. Check this out. Hundred, uh, sorry, five hundred armor blocks a hundred percent of melee damage. A hundred percent of melee damage, meaning no matter what swings, it's a zero. No matter what, it's multiplied by zero. All damage times zero sounds perfect, right? Gate can get through that. Okay. Gate can one shot anyone, even an admin, wearing those wings. Okay? They tested it. They probably made those wings specifically for it. I asked the admins themselves, they responded in game through server chat, which means everyone saw it. Okay? <laughs> they posted it as server chat. Which, that's awesome. Okay, a lot of the noobs were like, what? Gate? One shot? Anyone? Who? What? What is gate? And they all learned real quick. Gate is this really powerful boss. It's at the end of uh, Cathedral and Towers. And as you saw Deadly Tree, I'm pretty sure they said Ice Tower for Deadly Tree. He's basically gate. You may have noticed he has no listing for strength. It says N-A-N. Um, if you get it, I believe it also says N-A-N, but what it is is it's a scripted kill, meaning it always fires, it always hits, you always die, no matter what. That's how it gets through the admin wings, is because you get hit with infinite accuracy, infinite strength. 
it has an accuracy listing that's from before they added the script. What happened was the admins heard that some people started dodging that ludicrous amount of accuracy. And so they added the script. And now everybody dies. They get one hit. So it can be killed. It's a 100% drop rate, I believe. I didn't check. Um, you're free to check. You just right click on the, on the mob and you know you can check drops. You can even do it on these guys. Check it out. He drops nothing. So there you go. <laughs> but um, you can also do com combat analysis on them. So this guy apparently would decimate me. He would kick my butt. Um, <laughs> I only have 79 health. So I would last three rounds. Um, one thing to note for new players, go to your uh, menu, go to game options, go to game, turn on auto run away from fights. Make sure that's on. It may be annoying, but it can save your life. Okay, you cannot eat during a fight, technically. You can, but your time frame is one third, specifically the first third of the time frame allotted between processor processes. I'm pretty sure it's 0 0.003 seconds or maybe 0 0.03 seconds per cycle. So every, let's say, 0 0.03 seconds, the processor runs its cycle. During that first 0 0.01, you have that much time to click your food and get it eaten. If, for whatever reason, you manage to get it clicked in that 0 0.02 time frame, the food will disappear, the sound effect will play, the food will visibly be gone, but it is there. Because if you look in your spam messages, which I see in my general chat, if you look at spam messages, if you have that on, it will tell you, you cannot do this right now. So, when that happens, what ends up happening is, even though the food disappeared from your inventory, it will be invisible, you can mouse over it all you want, it won't have a tooltip or anything. What you do, close your inventory, okay? Reopen it. Is it there? If not, wait until after you are done fighting. Run from combat, whatever, okay? Try not to get into another fight before it happens, but, you know, get out of the fight and then, again, close your inventory, open your inventory back up. Make sure you actually do like I do there, where the window vanishes and comes back. Now, if you're on computer and you have your mods loaded or, you know, whatever, um, maybe you're on tablet or something, if you click that bag, it will uh, stay open. That's how I keep the bag open. Now, back to the flooring glitch. Remember how I had that one square, it had no flooring? Oh look, there it is. Flooring. Ha ha! Now, note, I have no soil in my inventory. Also note, these... Craft item soil... Okay, so if we look at soil, it says we need vials of water of varying sizes. Now, if we look, it says experience 52.5 for all four. This is incorrect. It's a flaw in the wiki, one of few. So, make a note. This one, the small vial of water soil, that is 52.5. This one is only 50. And this one is only 37.5. Now, to prove that, 
I'm going to craft it for you right now. We have double experience, so whatever you see appear as my experience earned, and I will even target my carpentry skill. That's what it's going to be dumping into. You can see up here my experience. That is... what is that currently? Okay, so that's my level up in, my next in. Okay, so that number is going to be decreasing by whatever amount I earn. This one should earn me 105 experience. Run whatever math you want now. So, 105. You can see it right there. This one should earn me 105. It will earn me 100 because it's only 50, not 52.5 like this one. Also, you'll note, I don't have these vials in my inventory. That's a common flaw. You can see right there, 100 experience. I crafted it. Okay. This one is only 37 and a half times 2. That's 75 experience. So 75 divided by 2, because I'm currently under slash XP. Time left, 20 point seven one minutes wow they actually have it rounded um to the hundred um so there you go um i suppose um also no i have no soil in my inventory boom placed now if i want to seed this soil first i need a rake the watering can, not as useful, but you can use it to cue the uh, unharvested uh, crops that are not yet fully grown. You can cue the crops that aren't fully grown yet. And then put the can away and run the cue and harvest them after they've become fully grown. So you can line it up in advance. That's why I have it. I'm actually planning on getting a gilded one. So I click the item, it's now equipped, it's yellow as you can see, and you'll notice I don't have the farming queue loaded, I just wanted to do that one, so I just did it. I didn't need the farming queue. Farming queue is useful because, as the name implies, it allows you to just queue them up. Just boop, 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 boop. And I can actually go through and do this entire island, which is a massive monumental feat, in one fire. Okay, the whole thing in one go. Which I'm going to show you the whole thing. It's, uh, let's see, open build menu, buildings. I built my ship completely. Um, it requires logs of every tier, including spirit, but not beyond. And then it switches to cotton cloth and bamboo cloth. And that will finish the ship. I am currently a 15 by 15. You can see level 15, upgrade to 16 by 16. That gives you a general idea. I'm pretty sure the starting island is uh, 13 by 13, maybe 12 by 12. I'm not sure specifically, but I'm going to go ahead and show you my entire island. Um, some people wonder exactly how much soil I have. To answer that question, it is 138. You are free to count. You can see them all from here. Here, let me move over. Okay, now you can see them all clearly from here. Um, yeah, I'm pretty sure it's 12 by 12 because it should line up with the sand. Note, you cannot place objects on the sand. Um, you saw me place an object earlier. All of those objects, by the way, are in the chest. Um, these all link back to the same chest, all of these cactus wood chests. The actual type of chest does not matter, putting more of them does not expand your chest space. To expand your chest space, you gotta click this little plus sign. For page 4, it's 9 million. Page 3, it's 3 million. Page 2, it's 500,000. Some people think that's a baffling amount. But, I'm going to show you a quick shortcut before we run out of time.
Okay? Now, a lot of people suggest mining sand. Sand is one option, but I never really recommend it. I suggest instead using the sand to craft vials so that you can fill the vials while raising your alchemy skill in the process, uh, as is covered in Tutorial Island, and then uh, we'll look at sand first. And then using the vials to, of course, craft soil. So, um, soil, we'll look at the buy for soil. Uh, 13,000. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's a lot. It's a big number. Um, some suggest just buying the soil outright. Um, the 10,000 orders tend to get filled for soil. Uh, let's let's look at sand. We were here for sand. I actually overshot it. Found soil first. So here we have sand. Um, you can buy it for about 200. Um, you can sell it for 185. If you go to the sell list, these pay out instant. You do not have to go to your transactions tab and collect. Here are my current transactions. I am buying steel full helmets, iron watering cans, I'm selling steel scimitars, white gold diamond necklaces, silver diamond rings, uh, a few of the different teleports, Narwa, Rackblood, and Walco. I'm try trying to get rid of my oak longbows, and I'm selling bag of worms. As you can tell, that's a 95 farming. Um, and then down here you see item count from. That is the people that have filled these. Anytime I go to new offer, it's going to post to this list, and then whenever anything from this list gets filled, it will tell me in the chat, and every time I log on, it'll also tell me how many offers I have. And then I come here, and I look at the bottom here, and if I continue scrolling, and I have offers, then it will, of course, tell me, you know, who it's from, how much, and of what. So, for example, if I decide to sell oak logs, okay, you'll notice it was that easy. Just right-click an item, mark it sell. Well, if I click him and I hit sell, he will have one log waiting for him in that menu, and I will instantly get paid the price that he posted. Now, let's say I'm wanting to buy. Well, it's the other way around there. He will have the coins waiting for him in transactions, and I will instantly get my one log. It's like that for anything. So, let's go ahead and look up the other item, the one I usually recommend for people to uh, grind out for a starting income. It's doable from the first town. It's great money. A lot of people hate on it, but it really is good money. Okay? It's used in archery. Um, it is specifically primarily used in tail feathers for arrows, known as arrow fletchings. Now, I'm buying right now. I can buy feathers for 2,000 per feather. Look at that. 2,000 versus the 25 for wiki value. You can see that right there. That is 8,000% increase. And keep in mind, NPCs only pay half of wiki value which means it is 16,000% over what an NPC will pay you. Mind blowing, okay? Now let's look at sell. Okay, so we noticed when we looked at the buy menu, one guy was offering uh, feathers and he wanted two grand. Let's go ahead and fill his order. I have the money for it, sure. Okay, now I have a bunch of feathers. I just paid 2000 each for them. Now I'm going to turn around and sell these feathers to someone who actually is waiting for them. 
because well, they're waiting for them. And I can actually pick who, because all of these offers are asking the exact same amount. Uh, let's see, any of these offers really old? Ooh, obvious. <laughs> Your offer is about to expire. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and fill Fisherman Fred. He looks like he requires a small number, so I'm going to fill him a little bit. And boom, there he goes. I got my money. He got his feathers. Everybody happy. Um, there we go. Yeah. So, I don't know why that was bugged a little bit. Uh, I have a few different things. You'll notice I'm holding on to some of these presents. Those can be crafted into a better grade. Some people don't recommend it. I just want to do it because I want to do it. Uh, grass and hay and wheat. They're really good for selling to breeders. Grass, not so much. Hay and wheat are usually in very high demand. If you get raw bass, hold on to it. Do not sell it to an NPC because NPCs do not sell it. So, players are going to start wanting to pay more for it. They're wanting to buy it. They're wanting it. It's in demand. It's, it's a product, you know? I'm guessing there's probably... Uh, offers that I can sell to right now, and I'm guessing they're probably kind of inflated. Uh, okay, so it's not inflated. He's paying wiki price. That's not bad, but it's probably going to go up. It probably will. Um, you'll notice I have raw rock squid and raw pearl clam. I'm going to go over raw pearl clam real quick. I have like three minutes, so <laughs> I'm just hammering through them. I'm sorry. Um, I'm going to check Wikicraft. This tells me all the different ways to obtain it. Look at that. That is the base percentage right there when you meet the minimum requirement in this skill. And there is the maximum. Now, if I actually go to these areas, for this one, it reads 0.00% because what it is, is it's actually per attempt less than 0.004% to actually catch it. So if it managed to, to get the loot roll all the way down to that item because it's sequential, if I, like, I, I don't have anything here to actually check the drops on, but if I were to actually check drops on something in the order that it lists it, um, actually I can do that. I know something I can do that on. Wiki mob name ice baby griffin. This is what I suggest after chickens and hens. Chickens have a better drop rate because they have a smaller loot table. But if I mouse over the feather, you will see 15%. That is a base rate. Now, if I check drops, it will tell me feather is 14.11%. Clearly a discrepancy. That's because what's happening is it gets to iron staff. Rolls iron staff. 1% chance. Okay, then it gets to shark beak. That's got a 5% chance, so it rolls shark beak. Did I get a shark beak? No. It gets to feather. 15% chance. Well, by this point, I've rolled those first two items. So what are my actual odds per kill of getting one of these feathers? The feather, if it were the first drop, would be 15%. But because it is the third drop behind those two items, per kill it is 14.11%. That's the difference between base and modified. Um, some people may like faith griffins, like, like baby faith griffins. They're nice, but they don't have ice feathers. That's really actually the only difference between baby I, uh, faith baby griffins and uh, ice baby griffins. Watch. Sort by level. And while I'm at it, I'll go ahead and I will check chickens and hens. So you can compare them real quick. We got chicken. We got hen. So you can compare those. And then we have ice baby griffin. And then where is... Sorry, I'm getting a bit of lag here. 
Wait, is he new? Oh, no, no, he's not new. Okay. Where's, where's Faith Baby Griffin? They're supposed to be in here. Uh, sorry about this. Oh, there he is. He was above. <laughs> okay, so if we compare the two, you can already see right now the difference is clear. Okay, the stats are slightly different. Um, I'm pretty sure that's health. So they have uh, identical health. Uh, let's see, that is accuracy, the faith is less accurate, less powerful, less defended, but he does not have ice feathers, which is 0.25%. So let's go ahead, let's check the drops, compare the two, and that'll tell you the differences right there. You can see feather is identical between the two, but then we get to some of the nope nope actually it it looks pretty much the same um because <laughs> I, I guess it's just so minuscule of a difference but look at the no loop that shows the difference right there so there is a difference in the no loop you get more loot from an ice baby griffin per kill because of that ice feather and um, the Iron Staff can be sold in Revolve to the Revolve Magician. The Sharp Beak can be used in Potions. I'll go over that in a moment. Those, again, can be sold to the market for 2000 apiece. These can be sold on the market as is for about 20k each. Or you can level up the pet for uh, 120,000 for a level 3, which is a Royal Griffin. Um, we can look that up briefly also. So first, we'll look up the sharp beak. We check Wikicraft for that because it is alchemy, and you can see it is this potion of faith. Now, different sizes, different strengths, but that's basically what it does: defense and magic. Not very valued because defense mage, not popular. Okay, so moving right back along, where are those griffins? Okay, so. We're going to check Wiki Pet for the baby griffin. And then we'll check on the griffin specifically because it'll actually show all three. 150,000 for it to reach level two. And then another 300,000 for it to reach level three, which means combined total, it's 450,000 experience for a hundred thousand extra points may not sound worth it but these guys are used for breeding so breeders want these they will pay for these okay the price may vary make sure you check the price in the market check both the buy and sell lists make sure you do that um it's actually three minutes past closing time so i'm going to stop recording i ran out of time sorry guys have fun, enjoy, make a lot of money, and remember, respect the rules, because, you know, they're there for a reason, don't give the mods a hard time. Um, I'm gonna pop up the rules real quick. Uh, you know, respect the rules, specifically the ones about the correct channels. And uh, then, I, I guess I gotta get going sure. and shut down. Yeah, and you know, right through, so we're gonna start <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> they're telling me they're closing. Um, I'm already wrapping up, so that's good. So, respect the rules. If you scroll down to the bottom of the rule list, um, you can see the... Uh, well, actually, there you go. You can see the rules there. Um, make a note of that. Have fun. Be nice. Um, if you can't be nice, at least be an 18, because... Uh, the in chat is for asking for help. M chat is for asking moderators to look into something such as bugs, glitches, potting, etc. Um, try not to pester them too much. They're players too. <laughs>